been such a long, long time till I get you off of my mind, and I can't just the thought of you. The thought of you turns my whole world misty blue. Oh. oh, 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 oh. oh honey. I can't forget you Deep in my heart You know I'll try Y'all don't know about that Dr. Moore Y'all better get some blues and soul and rhythm In your soul, you hear me? What's up? Look, I know it said evening snack with me But I just finished my little snack So, uh, my after dinner snack And, uh So I'm just doing my little stroll to walk it off But, uh If you've already had dinner, grab a snack Holla at your boy uh, this is Rico and his opinions, or oh, Rico is so opinion, no, it's Rico and his opinions, and I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Rico the Opinionist, so check me out, so we'll say something really quickly about something I learned about, and I've been, did a little research on it, right, uh, okay, there's this, I guess, long time NFL executive coach or executive white guy by the name of Eric Mayfield. What's up, bro? What's good? This executive guy, I think John Gruden. Uh, what's up, Eric Rivers? What's good? John Gruden. He uh, he sent out a, a racist email some time ago, I guess back in 91 or something. They just now, through some kind of investigation, came up with it, came came across the email, right? And he referred to uh, Demarcus Williams, I think his name, a football player is uh, De DeMorris or De Dumbo, De Dumbo Williams or something. And then he said his lips are like Michelin tires. He called them rubber lips. And that uh, that really hurt Hall of Fame player Randy Moss's feelings. If y'all watch the little ESPN show that he's on, uh, he was just so hurt by it. You know, we NFL, we're supposed to be moving forward, but we're moving backwards, and my civil rights were almost attacked when I was in high school. I mean, he brought up all of that. All right, yeah, I'm going to tell y'all what I saw. And um, this was brought to light when I was checking out my man. Kwame Brown, y'all watch Kwame Brown, uh, Bus Life, Kwame Brown, Bus Life on YouTube. He spits a lot of knowledge for a former NBA player. And uh, I uh, went and looked up this Randy Moss. I'd heard about him, but never really paid attention to him. I went and found a video where he was literally in tears because a white man hurt his feelings for throwing out the racial slur. Randy Moss, where the hell you been? Uh, and of course, you knowing the white guy and reading the articles and stuff, he's trying to play it down and deny it and all of that, which is no protocol. That's how they do. But thing is, are we still tripping about white people being racist in 2021? We've been here for 400 years. Y'all not used to white people, particularly old white men. See, the younger ones, you no, know, the young liberal whites, they can hide it a little better. But the, uh, the old white guys over 60... No, some of them over 50, but oh, really over 60. And they live through the heyday when white men can do and say what they want to say in front of black folks called 50 year old black men, boy. And they can't sit here and do all kinds of systematic slick shit that they still do. And we're still hurt by it. But you know, Eric Mayfield, you know why we're surprised that there are a lot of white people, that he speaks for a lot of white people. Uh, because a lot of us have done what Elijah Muhammad said that we did, right? Elijah Muhammad said this about 70, somebody, 70 years ago. We've done everything we can to try to get accepted into the White House or accepted into, you know, white society. A lot of us have kneeled in, we've prayed in, we've slept in, we've crawled in, we've tried everything on, on the planet except for one thing that is more powerful than an atomic bomb, that is our black unity. A lot of people, and, and, and believe it or not, 
When I see people who are interracially dating, married, not dating, but married, I say interracial marriages are nothing but strategies that black people use to survive under this racist system. Sure, you can debate it somewhere else. It's not a debate for me, I understand. But you know, if you can't beat them, join them, right? Folks do. Rico, you know love, love sees no color. Sure, let me know when a, when a Nazi, when a Jew starts marrying Nazis. Okay? Let me know. When Jews start marrying Palestinians, let me know. I mean the Jews in Israel, when they start marrying Palestinians. All that old bullshit, just, it's cool. But you can't talk to me like that because I have, I have all three of my eyes wide open. Let's get back to this dude, Randy Moss, right? And by the way, for those of you who started panicking, we go hate white people. It's not that at all. And who gives a shit if I did or didn't? That's your concern. I'm cool, whatever's cool with me. But I understand, I'm just like an Italian white man. I'm just like a Jewish white man. I want to see my group progress and go further. So therefore, in order for that to happen, I need to marry and reproduce with my own people. That's how that works. There's nothing pro-black about that. It's pro-Jewish, pro-Hispanic, pro-white, pro-black. It's everybody is pro. So don't try to stick that label on me. Rico hates white people. No, I kick with whoever kicks it with me. But I know I'm not going to reproduce children or anything that does not look like me. The rest of you have done it. There ain't no hating. I'm just saying. I guess we all try to survive under white supremacy some kind of way, huh? Instead so of just being real men and women and coming to each other, we just think we'll get it better by going laying up with the other. Oh, yeah, shout out to Serena Williams and her possible divorce from her. <laughs> Less than Bart or Brad. Anyway. So anybody know that whoever's cool with me, I'm cool with whoever. What's up, Dusty? What's up, bro? But anyway, um, let's get back to this damn Randy Moss. And uh, there are people who written some things and said some things about dude. I didn't know him, per se. No, per se. But I uh, I went and looked him up and see where he came from, who he is, and, and most importantly, if to me, who is he married to? Well, right now he's married to a really pretty black woman. That's his second wife. Well, during his prime years, his young years, he's married to a not a very attractive white woman, and he had all his children with the white woman. So, and you all are asking, Rico, why does that matter? Well, thank you for asking. See, Dr. Frances Cress Welsing, the great scholar, African Center scholar that she was, she wrote the book, The ISIS Papers, and, and in a lecture, well, I had the, privi the privilege of, of listening to her and then afterwards getting to talk to her. It was held at Tennessee State University's campus near Fisk. It was a 2003 or 2004 hip-hop conference there. Brother Hakeem Kabuti and Brother Neely Fuller and the guy who runs the website, uh, uh, the, the Ghetto Times, G-H-E-T-T-O-T-Y-M-Z, The Ghetto Times. He was he used to be a... He used to be a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, but he denounced or renounced the, the Greek led organization and became a more African citizen conscious and he started man, breaking it down. So check out his website, right? And many others were there. Okay. What well, she said there, she said, hey, whoever you lay down with, whoever you marry, that's who you share your philosophy with. And so I went and looked up Randy White. Randy White with his white woman, and, and, and they was all accused of doing drugs, and they was going, he went to jail, he did all that. That's nothing I'm holding against the brother. I just said I did some research. I'm trying to explain what is this big, tall, strong, brawny black man doing crying over because somebody called somebody a racial slur. A white man called somebody a racial slur. See, if y'all listen to enough of my videos, y'all understand where I'm coming from. The only people who have problem with white folks are those who are trying to live, be up under them, marry them, live next door to them, date their daughters, or date their sons. The rest of us don't have these issues with white folks because we understand who and what they are. But Randy Moss, he gets his, his black ass on TV and almost makes a Terry Crews of himself. 
it really hurt me. It really hurt me. Uh, when he said that, I thought the NFL was moving forward. It's like we're moving backwards. <laughs> oh, then grab some tissue and... My feelings show sure is hurt that that white man said that I really respected him. Oh, yeah, he was tripping. But how can you... I like... I know, that was a little for dramatic effects, right? But, uh... It's like, Randy Moss, come on, bro. Y'all, the, the biggest and the blackest of us need to stop it. We need to stop this foolishness. And then it's interesting how they always find the biggest, the tallest, the blackest, the strongest of us to act like bitches in public. You got them wearing dresses. You letting little five foot two ass white men grab all around your dick. You got, what else? You crying on TV. I'm not saying that black men should not express their emotions. But stuff, I, when I see stuff that's like strategically planned or, or doesn't make sense, I'm like, you care about what this hunky said? You care, Randy Moss? Y'all dudes do a lot to keep y'all jobs on TV, don't you? Even disparaging, disrespecting 18, 19 year old black athlete Stephen A. Smith. That's something. So, uh, what is this? See, Randy Moss is not the only black dude on TV who, no, uh, who, um, Shows the elite that he's a good old boy. He's a good nigger. Crying and shit on TV. It's the weirdest thing. And I'm going to take y'all a little further. I hope y'all got a minute to talk to me. Because I want to run something. As Randy Moss's situation just... It's allowing me to segue over to something else. But it's still sports related, right? I've uh, been privy to... You know, have a little part-time gig. In a place where I can see football games all day, right? And... uh also, with sports bars and barbershops, you hear black men talking about sports all the time. Now, and there's nothing wrong with that. But listen to the passion that they have when they're, when they're discussing these football games. I mean, they're almost about to come to blows. They know every statistic. They know every year which stuff happened. They know about everything. Statistics. I mean, black men. If you want, to, if you want to hear black men speak about a top, a topic without running out of breath, and with a lot of energy and happiness and zeal and fervor, bring up sports. But you can't get average black men across America to to have that much passion, that much zeal, that much fervor in a discussion with each other about the fate of black boys. Do I need to say that again? You can't get black men. Let's go back to what Randy Moss said. He said, oh, I love football. I love football. It's just something in my spirit, in my, my soul, my, my cells that go to run through my body. I love football. And, uh, and for him to say that thing, it just, ooh, it hurt me to my core. Come on, somebody. And black men really love sports like that. Really love, I love football. I'm like, come on, Randy, bro. And black men, anything, you bring up LeBron, you bring up uh, anything going to the NBA, you bring up any NFL thing, you can't shut a black man, an old Negro up. You can't shut a 20 to 35-year-old Negro up. But we're talking about the plight of black boys. Let's come up with solutions to, to save more black boys' lives. Let's speak politically about the salvation of black boys and black men. You can't hear a Negro even breathe in the room. See, that's the problem I have. You know, where where does our passion lie as black men in America? Why aren't we as passionate about the survival of us? You have other people talking about us, but black men as a whole, as a group in America, don't seem to give two shits about what happens to black boys and young black men. Now, we complain about their behaviors you know, the gang violence, the fighting and the shooting and the killing of one another. But none of these black dudes want to get out front to, to add some solutions to why they behave the way they do. Right? They don't. And I just find that to be amazing. Every time I see a Negro going back and forth, yeah, I'm with them Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I'm with them New York Giants. Yeah, boy, I'm with them Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, man, I'm with, you know, you stupid. I'm green with them Green Bay Packers. I mean, they are passionate about it. That, that mean, they talk so crazy to each other that they're almost about to come to blows. But I've never seen black men 
on average, in the barbershops, in the Kroger, in the sports bars, anywhere, almost come to blows about who believes that they have the better solution to the salvation and the progression and the preservation of the lives of black boys. There's something wrong with us. There's something wrong. And then when you then when you talk bring them talk about black boys and their salvation, what is it? Well, you know, I just take care of my son and your son. Well, you know, your son will run across those ones that you think you you shouldn't be responsible for, at least mentor to. I just wanted to share that because when I heard Randy Moss say that, it reminded me of exactly what drives black men. What is what what is our passion? It seemed to be stuff that we don't have to do too much work at home. All we got to do is add lip service to it. And that is talking about bullshit on ESPN, Fox Sports 1 or S S1, and even the commentary of Shannon Sharp and all this kind of shit. Stuff that don't even matter. Because when dealing with black boys and we want to deal with the issues, you have to get boots on the ground. And black men as a whole in this country couldn't give a shit about black boys. But we're always talking about what the police is doing and what how everyone else is treating them. But look how we treat them. I put a post up on my page, my Facebook page, and it's on my YouTube channel, I think. Just to remind us as a group, you know, uh, that black boys matter all year round. Not just doing football and basketball season. They're real people. Black men and black boys who are not professional athletes are real people. I'm a real person, goddammit. I exist all year round. Black boys in high school, black males in college, they exist all year round. Not just there for your personal pleasure. Your own personal aphrodisiac when shit ain't going right in your life. They're not just for your utility, for economic gain. Or, or bragging rights. You understand? See, we're going to get, gonna get to the solution of the salvation and the progression of our race. That is through the boys. When y'all get through looking at all the bald booty around here, all the fake eyelash and all the weave and all the stuck up shit, then you have to turn and realize that black boys are our salvation. We don't, if we don't nurture and groom them to be the men who grow up to be the protectors and the providers and hunter-gatherers for your daughters... Well, we won't be here. Because they're going to be a whole generation of a bunch of little Nas X little fuckers. going to be a whole generation of a bunch of young thugs. There's going to be a whole generation of all these other little inward spewing, r racial slur throwing, what else, uh, uh, anti-black existent little bastards. But then you're going to sit in the barbershops, you're going to sit in the church pew, you're going to sit everywhere else and talk about them, but you won't get your ass out in front and try to do something to help these boys. And the people that we're talking about have more access and resources than people like me. Bigger platforms than I have, but you don't have, but you don't have the strength or the guts to go out there in numbers. But if I bet, if I can say, hey, y'all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve beers, cigars, and Hennessy, and we're going to sit up and talk about sports. You know, I'll probably get 1,200 black men to show up for that. But if I want to talk about the solution, or we actually bring your, bring that money you're going to spend on the Hennessy and the cigars, to bring all that money, let's say it's build something so we can get these black boys through school and get them off the street and get them into places where they can be served, I'll probably have six guys to show up. That means all the cigars and Hennessy for us, because I lied to the rest of them little sorry fuckers. I just, just to see if they'll show up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. There ain't no six of us. We're going to drink all the Hennessy and smoke all the cigars. God damn it, I don't even smoke cigars. I do it just for the hell of it. You get it? You understand? So anyway, <laughs> so Randy Moss, I don't know what you got going on, brother. But get yourself together. Stop all that damn crying on TV. You worse than Van Jones. Another big old tall, strong, buxom, brawny brother crying his bitch ass on TV. And I'm not insensitive to black men being emotional. And, I, and I'm not going to sit here as if I never cried on social media. Go check out. I've, it's a couple of videos on my YouTube channel, Rico the Opinionist. It says Rico speaks on depression. I was drawing the tears to there. 
And it's probably another one. That's the one I remember the most, but it's others where I've, I've been drawn to tears right here on Facebook Live on you on my YouTube channel as well. You know why I was drawn to tears? Because whenever I talk about the fate of black boys, I can see it every day. That touches something inside of me. It's anger, it's frustration, it's aggravation. And then it transforms into tears. You understand? But Randy Moss wasn't crying because of no black males, per se. He was mad because the white man disappointed him with, that, with his racist language. He wasn't crying about the fate of black boys dying every week and every weekend in Chicago and Memphis and Dallas or wherever, in uh, um, New Orleans or wherever the urban areas across America. He wasn't crying because he was crying because his, his little white, that white man disappointed him. It hurt his heart. It just her crushed his feelings. So I'm not against black men showing their vulnerable side and their hurt. And I've always suggested we should show that more. But what we're not going to do is let you set a stage on in, in the, in the world and show, hey, I was a good one. I was a good one. See, I was crying. I, I really loved it, him. We're not doing that, Randy Moss or anybody else. We're not doing that. I see somebody tried to click on the scene, and I'm going to have to update my phone in order to be able to talk to you. I'm going to press this button if this damn thing will just hold on a minute. To see who wants to get in and talk to me. Hold on a second. But I, I don't think you're going to be able to come in. I don't know who this is. So I'm going to try. Uh, Dusty Bone is you. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, allow viewers to send a request to you on your phone. You can add them at any point. Okay. It's on. Add. And let's see if you can get on there. And I tried to add you, but uh, it won't come on. Anybody else want to try to come on? I'll talk to you if you want to talk. If you saw the Brandy Moss thing, I want to hear your thoughts on it. And I want to hear you uh, if you have any thoughts about what I said. I'll listen for a second, I guess. If you just want to share your thoughts about these black men just volunteering to be bitches in the public. What is that about? Uh, you still here, Dusty? I, I, I tried to add you, Rowan, uh, but it won't seem to let you on. This is my old phone. I'm sorry, man. may have to uh, go on my Facebook page and uh, maybe bring this up again. Who's, who's open for me to bring it on my Facebook page and I can do it on StreamYard? So which one of y'all are open to have a conversation and to say if I set it up on StreamYard? Let's see a thumbs up if you want to, if you're willing to come on StreamYard with me uh, on my Facebook page. Let's see some thumbs up if you want to have this conversation about what or, or something else you might want to throw out there. I'm open. If if I go on live on my Facebook page, would you be willing to come and? Uh, Robert Lee says Moss is trying to run interference for Gurdon. That's what's up. I'll stop you when you lie. Keep speaking the truth to life. Okay. But if uh, again, if anybody would like to talk to me, Robert or Dusty or Tino, Lucian, or anybody on here would like to talk to me when I go, say if I were to go live on my, I have to go on my laptop and put a stream yard on there. If y'all want to talk, we can talk. So throw a thumbs up if you'd like to, uh, if you'd be open to that. That's all, that's all the way I'd um, uh, pop up my laptop and we'll have that conversation. I think I'll do it anyway. You may change your mind in about 15 minutes. So anyway, I just want to share those thoughts. Thank you all so much for being on here. And uh, uh, in 30, about 20 minutes or so, 30, 20, 30 minutes, I'm going to go back live and, we'll, and I'll just uh, have a StreamYard link in there where y'all can just say what you want to say. How about that? Y'all be cool. We'll talk again in the future. Uh, Rico the Opinionist is my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe at your own risk. Be cool. Peace.